Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is another lecture of this graph theory series and in this lecture we are going to study about the in out times of the node. This is not uh, this is not a very fancy concept but this is important to have an introduction to before starting uh, to study about articulation points and bridges because we are going to use the same concept to find out the articulation points and the bridges there and also this this uh, in our time helps in flattening of tree and after flattening of tree you can apply Mohs algorithm to uh, process queries on the tree very quickly so this helps in many uh, algorithms so it is important for us to study about so let's start the lecture so suppose you are given a question that uh, and you are given n nodes suppose 10 is power 5 nodes and you are q queries each query would be in each query you will be given two nodes and you have to check whether one node lies in the subtree of another one of the node lies in the subtree of another there may be like 10 is power 5 queries so how you are gonna process th those queries and answer quickly so suppose this is the tree and you are given two node as two and five so we can see we have to print yes in this case because five lies in the subtree of two or the input was six four or four six so the answer would be yes again because six lies in the subtree of four but if the question was three four we can see none of the node lies in the subtree of another because node three in the node uh, in the subtree of node three there is only five in the subtree of Four, there is only six so we can see none of the node lies in the subtree of another so in this case we would print false or yeah false <clears throat> or no so how you are gonna process the queries and answer or output answer yes or no very quickly or in other, another word in constant time after some pre-processing before starting any query so this is where the in out time helps so in out time is basically the time when you uh, enter a node for dfs that's the time that time is in time and when you leave this node uh, for example we made a dfs call to node 2 from node 1 so the time you reach this node is called the in time and when a node 2 have processed all its children and it is ready to uh, track back to node 1 that time is called the out time of Two. so there uh, we would have two different arrays in and out to store the in and out times of each node so let's see how we would implement it first of all whenever uh, we have a timer integer timer uh, it would count start counting from one and in the dfs as soon as you reach that node you make it visited and also as soon as you reach some node you would save its uh, in time and after processing all the children's whenever you are going to track back or you are going to return from the that point you would save its out time and each time you save its time you increment it so next time whenever you someone uses it this time that gets the updated time so you saved time one you increment it so the timer would become two so the next time someone uses it that gets the correct time so let's take an example and see how this works suppose from the main function you made a dfs call, call to node one and the timer at that time was one so as soon as you reach node one you set its in time to one and after setting its in time you increment the timer so it becomes two now in the adjacency list of one there is two so you would make a dfs call to node two as soon as you reach node two you make its you insert or update its in time to two and you after that you increment the counter in the adjacency list of node 2 there is 1 but 1 is already visited so we would move on there is 3 so we would make a dfs call to node 3 and set its in time to 3 and then we would increment the timer in the adjacency list of 3 there is only 2 but 2 is already visited so the work of node 3 has completed so it would return so before returning it would what it would do it it would update its out time and also after that it would increment the uh, timer and then 
it would return to node 2 as we can see node 3 has vanished from the stack so now we are at node 2 again so node 2 would uh, continue its dfs so the next node is 4 so we would make a dfs call to node 4 and and then we would save the in time of node 4 in the adjacency list of node 4 there is 2 and 5 but 2 is visited so we would make a dfs call to node 5 so as soon as we reach node 5 we would make the in time to 6 and increment the timer now in the adjacency list of 5 there is only 4 but 4 is already visited so we would uh, return from node 5 so before returning from node 5 we would set the read out time of node 5 to be 7 and increment the timer so we have set the out time of node 5 to 7 and then incremented the counter and now we are at node 4 since the work of node 4 is also completed so it would save its out time and then return to node 2 now work of node 2 is already completed so it would also save its out time to 9 and increment the counter and return to node 1 node 1 as all the nodes in the adjacency list of node 1 have completed its execution so uh, node 1 also would save its out time and then return so this is how the in and out time works so basically you entered node 1 at time 1 and then at time 2 you reach to node 2 at time 3 you reach to node 3 and then 3 have nothing to do so it would return at time 4 and then at time 5 you would read 4 and then at time 6 you would read 5 and so on so these are in and out times now how this in and out time helps us to answer the queries that we have seen in the sec second slide so whenever there is a node uh, in the given question we have to tell whether one node lies in the subtree of another or not if one node lies in the subtree of another node then its in time would be greater than the in time of the root because suppose this node lies in the subtree of this node then you would reach this node first and then you would reach the subtree you always traverse root first and then you go to subtree so the in time of root would be smaller than the in time of the children so if one node lies in the subtree of another then uh, there one of the node would have the higher in time and another one would have lower in time and then before you can uh, uh, so another thing the property of out time is that if this node is inside the subtree of another node then its out time would be smaller than the out time of root of course you would leave children first then you would leave root so the out time of children would be smaller than the out time of root so what it tells us is that if a node x lies in the subtree of node y then the in time of x would be higher than in time of y and out time of x would be smaller than out time of y so in time of children would be higher than the in time of root and out time of children would be smaller than the out time of root so this way you can tell whether the node 1 lies in the uh, subtree of another uh, of second node or not and if that's not the case then suppose we are talking about node 3 and node 4 then in time of uh, if you entered this node first then you would leave this node before you can enter another subtree so uh, suppose node 1 had another subtree then and we chose to go here in the dfs call then the in time of this node would be something and then all the node would get traversed and then something would be the out time of this node and then only the another subtree would be traversed so what i want to say is that if two nodes do not lie in the subtree of one another then in time of one node in time and out time of one node would be higher than the in time and out time of another node this way you can tell whether one node lies in the subtree of another or not so this is very important concept and using the same in out time concept we are going to uh, find out the bridges and articulation points and hence this was important concept to teach so i hope you guys have understood if not just 
take an example try to do it by pen and pen uh, paper and then that way you would un understand better so thank you guys for watching and i would see if i can make a video on some practice problem or not using the same concept so thank you guys for watching and yep till then keep coding